I told you guys. You know, one must not say I told you so too many times, but today's going to be I told you so show or video. You know, for, for years, I've been told that Microsoft does nothing but corrupt these studios and Microsoft can't elevate these studios at all xbox can do no right when it comes to interacting with studios or them buying all of these development teams doesn't matter in the long run apparently the people at obsidian disagree with you well let's 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 recap the people who make wasteland disagrees with you xl entertainment the people who make psychonauts which is double fine they disagree with you and now it looks like the people who make Obsidian, they also disagree with you. You know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into making studios. There's a lot of stuff that goes into making a game. But it looks like Microsoft is helping with all of these things. Now let's 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 pop over here, man. Let's pop over here. As you guys can see, Colobo, they they did some documentary with Avowed. And they revealed some interesting information. You know, I'm not going to go into the video itself because... I don't want to risk any type of copyright. I will put the video in the description below so you can watch it yourself. Very interesting couple videos. But Obsidian talks about Avowed. Avowed had a co-op focus early in development, now changed to a traditional Obsidian single-player RPG. Now, we know a few years ago, we saw people talking about whether or not it was going to be you know, a traditional game, you know, and, and I remember there was a specific thing going on where they showed us that initial launch trailer all those years ago. And there was a lot of rumors going around that there was like a huge shift in the development process. I remember that specifically. Now let, let's go ahead and uh, watch this video though. That's what we will do. Let's watch this video. All right, let's, I got to, I got to change my speakers real quick. Was it about go. was going to be multiplayer and totally unprofessional, but it's not worth cutting. When I look back at 20 years, there's decisions of mine that I, I feel really good about. And there's decisions that I feel not so good about. One of the things where I really pushed was it avowed was going to be multiplayer. multiplayer. And I kept on that for a long time. And and I think in the end that was not 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 I think, I know in the end guys. it was the wrong decision to keep on pushing on it. Now why I had done it was when we were still independent and we were selling it. It was it was a more interesting game to publishers. And when you're asking for 50, 60, 70, 80 million, you got to have something interesting to talk about. And so pretty much he's saying there, look, when we're independent, it's all about our pitch. We got to explain to these companies, these corporations that, you know, would want to bring our game on their on their platform or, you know, maybe EA funding it, uh, it and publishing it. We got to explain to them why this game's different than all the other games, why they should put their money behind this game and give us 60, 70. I don't remember the figure he used, but that amount of million dollars, it's, it's a tough sell. So. His mindset was, let's go with a multiplayer f feature, which is co-op, and let's see how that goes. Maybe someone will pick us up because of that. Let's continue listening. And multiplayer made it interesting. It was sort of this idea of it's almost like, you know, it's the peanut butter and chocolate putting it together and like, wow, it must be something that's, that's good. We were too focused on co-op and we were too focused on um, changing the way our, our pipelines work and, 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 and the types, the way that we write conversations and the way we do quests and, and everything else. After working on it for a little bit, we realized that we weren't focused on the things that we're best at. And so we did make, um, we made a pivot on the game basically to refocus really and um, make sure that it was at the end of the day an obsidian game and not not something different. I really respect that, you know, going away from the Xbox and Microsoft thing. First off, I respect Microsoft for letting them do this. There's a lot of publishers that are like, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care. We were sold on a multiplayer co-op featured game. That's what we, that's what we expect. And we, we were going to get that. It seems like Microsoft was like, look, you guys told us it was something different, but we trust in your vision for your game. So we're going to let you go back to the drawing board and restructure stuff because it looks like they were having 
you know, a lot of difficulties making stuff revolve around the dialogue system. You guys know how typical RPGs go. During conversations, you can have different forms of outcomes of that conversation. And the way I'm interpreting this, it was hard for them to distinguish from two characters speaking in those dialogue going back to back. That's how I'm looking at it. I don't know, though. The thing that was both exciting and intimidating about stepping into this role on Avowed is it's an IP that I know, but it's a different style of game for us. And so figuring out how much exactly we want to take from Pillars 1 and Dead Fire, and then how we make that game, this game more approachable to a larger audience that maybe didn't play the Infinity Engine games and maybe didn't play either of the original Pillars games at all. Like, how do we stay true to that IP, but how do we create an experience that's more approachable for a larger audience? It's a challenge, and and you also don't have so much of that common language. One thing I don't like the conversation is what she said there. You know, I know this isn't really going to be on what they this individual studio has said on it, but I don't like when they say we want to make it more approachable for a larger audience, because to me, that screens, we want to dumb down mechanics that someone that doesn't normally play these kind of games would understand now it's up in the air if that's what she meant or not i don't know but i just want to give my feedback on that let's continue which that you share with the rest of your team having either worked on the base game together or at least having seen that base game come together fairly recently you're building new stuff and so there are some reference points you can obviously look to but there is so much more that you have to define. One of the big challenges when we started that pivot was we were defining that direction and building a vertical slice and then preparing for production all in about eight months. It was very hectic. It's something different and it's something that's very unique and something I think people will really love to play, but it's not going to fit kind of the exact mold of what I've seen the trend being was expected for Avowed. Part of the challenge is, you know, building yeah, I think that has to do with what they're saying. You know, I might be that traditional person that I might expect a vow to be something different. See, here's the thing, though. Obsidian has gotten my trust so much with them that even if the game isn't exactly the way I interpreted it or the way I envisioned the game to play, I trust their vision. If they feel like that was a better direction. Now, obviously, when the game comes out, I can completely disagree with their vision, but up until that game comes out, I do trust Obsidian to make the decision that's best for their game. Let's continue. Something that delights your fans, but knowing that you're not going to meet everybody's specific expectations. And if you tried to, you'd have the, the roast chicken and M&M pizza. Avowed is our version of what a first person fantasy game is. We focus on a lot of uh, unique and bespoke content. We focus on deep systems. We focus on incredible uh, storytelling that's focused on characters and societies and factions. I think Avowed is the natural extension of all the things that we care about as a studio and all the things that we're great about as a studio. I think there's going to be a lot of people who love this game. So, Guys heard it, man. You know, they, they are focusing this game on story, story, and story. Obviously, their combat mechanics. You know, I think that as much as my hype for this game went down a little bit when I saw the kind of change in art style a little bit, I wouldn't even necessarily go on, like, the change in general. But certain areas in this game don't look like that initial launch tra tra trailer that they showed us all those years ago. But I'm hyped for Avowed. I am. You know, probably not as much as Starfield. Maybe that is because of recency bias. You know, Starfield's coming sooner. So it's hard for me to really get that mental mindset to really want to hype this game up. But right now, I'm, 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 I'm hyped. I want to play it. I want to see, you know, what the dialogue on it. Because if that's one thing you could say about Obsidian, they know how to make dialogue in a game. If you guys haven't played The Outer Worlds... I highly recommend you go over there and play. And that's the greatest thing about this. Avowed comes out. I think it's going to be a good game. But then I turn right around. And guess what? The Outer Worlds probably a year and a half to two years later. And then Fables around that time. You know, we got Elder Scrolls Six probably coming out at the end of Fables life cycle. It is a great time to be an Xbox gamer. It's a great time to be a gamer in general. 2023 has been an amazing year for games. And I love that I'm able to cover this stuff with you guys. I think I will start doing a little bit more in deep dives on games that I love, such as like Avowed, Starfield. 
I, I want to give you guys my opinion on what I think Starfield and Avowed should be. I don't know when I'm going to make these videos. Starfield's going to be pretty soon, actually, because I need to get that content out there to you guys because Starfield's coming out here soon. But what do you guys think? Do you guys think that Xbox has helped these studios? I think this this speaks for itself. You know, when we've seen stuff like Wasteland say that boss fights was put into the game and we see, you know, Psychonauts say the same thing. There's a large amount of content that was put into Psychonauts 3 because Microsoft gave them the opportunity and the time to make that stuff. And a lot of other developers would not have did that. I mean, publishers would not have did that. They would be like, we want our money now. We don't want it six months from now. And I think the industry in general is getting better on that, but you could see Microsoft really giving these devs the time they need to make the game they want. And you saw that with Avowed. They clearly went in there with an envision that they didn't see working out, didn't see clicking, it didn't seem like in a game that they make, like an Obsidian game. And clearly they went to Microsoft and Xbox and said, we need more time. And Xbox said, go ahead, make this game what you guys want. And right there is all I need to hear. But tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. And until next time, this is Gaming Addict. I'm out of here. Peace.